We're excited about the whole idea of the Internet of Things because they're being driven by four things which are touching everyone's lives. So we've got democratised technology at the moment, so everyone's got a smartphone in their pocket. We've got ubiquitous computing. There's lots of uh, affordable things like sensors and microchips that can be placed into all manner of objects. We've got pervasive networks, so things like Wi-Fi. We've got 4G and 3G networks that we can tap into so that we can tap into the, the Internet internet and the world wide web and we've got abundant data as well which means that we can interact with things and get sort of personalised feedback which feels unique to us as individuals. So the internet of objects or the internet of things is, is really interesting to us because it means that all manner of data is generatable, if that's a word, from all manner uh, of objects. Um, and we're used to hearing about the Internet of Things in terms of stuff like smart cities and infrastructure, but we're increasingly kind of interested in what it means for consumer products and how embedded technologies and things like, well, any manner of objects, so things in your kitchen, perhaps it's the trains that you wear. Obviously, our mobile phones are connected to the Internet, but could they become something that facilitates the Internet of Things. Um, how, how is that going to emerge? Is it going to emerge? And I think that's part of the, the debate that we're really interested to see in the discussion. If we're embedding technologies that can connect to the Internet in consumer products, uh, how is that going to change product design? How is that going to change service design uh, as well? So there's a, there's a couple of examples that we think are really interesting. As I say, there's not many examples that have really emerged yet, but in Japan, for example, there's a Panasonic rice cooker, which, is, which can be connected to the internet so that you can download your favourite kind of recipes and automatically the cooker is set to uh, cook the rice at the exact method that's required for the dish that you, that you like. So there are one or two kind of examples seeping through. Uh, I think we've also seen the start of it with something like uh, Nike Plus and now Nike Fuel Band and whilst those objects don't connect directly uh, to the internet, they do have roundabout ways of the data that they generate connecting to communities and connecting to online platforms. Uh, and we think that that's really interesting as well. Um, there are movements like the quantified self, so people who are interested in their biometric data, their psychological data and their personal financial data generating all of that information over time uh, to see how they can optimise their lives in different ways. You know, how can they save better? How can they uh, ensure that they're less likely to be at risk from heart disease? So there's all sorts of areas where the Internet of Objects, the Internet of Things and, and generating data could transform the lives of consumers uh, and that needs to be done though through the design of products. And so we're really interested to see what the community has to say about that as well. Contagious Magazine is known in the advertising and marketing world as an early warning system for brands. And so one of the things that we're interested in at the moment is how marketing and products and services are beginning to, to merge. And the Internet of Things and the potential for the Internet of Things uh, is sort of at the heart of that. So that's why we're really interested to be able to speak to a group of, uh, or a community of designers about yeah, what are their thoughts on the future of the Internet of Things and how does it, how does it implicate them?